So this week we have an asteroid that's going to pass between the Earth and the Moon. And the best time to view it is going to be tonight. And so I'm going to show you how to find this in Stellarium and plan your imaging session. There are a couple things we need to do. For one thing, we need to be able to find this. And then two, I've got here its path. And so let's head on over to the left. And this is the configuration. And here we have under SSO for solar system objects. In order to display the path, we want to do this show orbits button. So when I deselect it, you can see that the path has disappeared. All right, so that's the first thing we need to do. So we want to enable this show orbits. If you go over to the search window right here and you type in the name of this, so our asteroid today is 2023 DZ2, and if nothing shows up, then you need to add it to Stellarium. So here in the configuration window, under solar system editor, in the under solar system, all right, and I press this button right here, and now it says, Download from the internet. Select the source from the list. So if we hit this down arrow, scroll down, and right here, Near Earth Asteroids. So we select that. So here's the link that it's going to uh, import from. And then say Get Orbital Elements. Now right here, this is doesn't really, it isn't obvious, but this bar right here is actually a search. So if we do 2023, so there's DZ2, because I've already done it. But let's just look and add another one. So like here's 2023 DZ1. Now I have not imported that. So let's say we we'll want to import this one. And instead, we click on it. And then add objects. 2023, and there you go right there, DZ1. Now, obviously, our, our subject is DZ2, but I'm showing you how to add any asteroid or any other object to Stellarium. So now we're just going to do the one that we're interested in, which is DZ2. And now we have to determine when is the best time to view it. So today is the 24th of March. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to simulate from now forward at my particular location. Now up here, we want to look at the magnitude. So let's say we try to look at it tomorrow. Okay, so it's no longer in the field of view. Okay, so now it's two o'clock in the morning. Now I really don't want to do that, and the magnitude is now greater, so that means that it is dimmer. So if we continue this and we try it on different days and we try it different times, now it's five o'clock in the morning and it's even dimmer. So we're gonna go back to the 24th and go back to a more reasonable time where I would want to view this. There's 10 o'clock, there's nine o'clock at night. And so the next thing is checking uh, how high it is in the sky. And here we have a 70 degrees in the sky, so that is very high. So that works out very well for me. Just to, so that you can see this move, let's pick a star that's close to it, like this one right here. And then we're going to go down to the speed editor. I'm going to double click this. And now if you, I'm going to speed up time, and you can see the asteroid now moving away from that star. All right, you click the play button one time to go into current time, or not current time, rather, just regular speed. And so now you can get an idea of which direction it's moving along its orbit. So now that we have the asteroid added to Stellarium, we know approximately the best day to do it, which we know is gonna be on the 24th, and we have a time frame. So let's uh, find out how we're actually going to locate this with the telescope. So I'm going to go back to my preferred time, I'm uh, say about 8.30, something like this. 
So this could be my target. And how you find this is going to be uh, fairly straightforward. We're going to find a, a star that's very close to it. And then we'll use that star for your hand controller or for Nina or for the ASI error or whatever method you are using. So take, for example, this star right here. Okay, that's not named. But this one is. All right, so this is HIP 41326. And so we should be able to find this star in whatever uh, database you are using. And then that's going to be the best way to do this. Unless, of course, you can add the asteroid to the uh, object database that you are using in, to control your telescope. So the, I'm just going to do a nearest star and try that method. And uh, then if I can add it, great, all the better. But this will give us a good planning session. And over here, I have uh, my image. This is the 200 millimeter. And if I want to uh, see how it looks at 400 millimeter, now, if I were just going to shoot this star right here, it would be in the field of view quite easily. So that's going to be the method I'm going to try. So tonight I have uh, partly cloudy skies, and I don't know whether I'm going to be able to find it at all, but this is how I'm going to hunt. And if anybody out there uh, can do this and have clearer skies than I do, then please let me know in the comments. I'd love to see your results.